Hello everyone, Sir Monkey Suit Azabi here, back again with Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. We are on episode 13 and in the last episode, uh, it was a nice little episode that was um, sort of dedicated around uh, Izumi, which is the Elric's teacher, um, you know, teaching them alchemy, uh, bas or basically how to hone it, I suppose, because realistically the Elric's already knew little bits about it from, you know, reading um, their father's books, uh, which we also kind of, we didn't meet, uh, but we do know his name, so it's Hohenheim. Um... And he, you know, I mean, of course he would know stuff about the Philosopher's Stone and everything like that. Uh, lifelong dream coming true and, 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 and things like that. Um, which definitely is interesting. And I don't think I mentioned it in the post discussion for the last episode. But um, it, it may have been like when I was editing the actual video that like... Maybe there's something with that. Like, you know, like this idea that maybe like, you know, the father is... Uh, you know, you could easily see him as like a... Yeah you know, like this, this uh, bad guy, right? Because he, he just like left his family. But maybe there are reasons, you know what I mean? Like maybe it's not as just cut and dry as, you know, just seeing it from the Elric's point of view. I mean, of course, like, you know, because as far as the Elric's are concerned, you know, their dad fucked off um, and their mother had to take care of the kids on her own and eventually succumb to... Um, that pandemic thing that, that swept through right swept through the country so like obviously from their point of view it's like you know what i mean you left not just like me and my brother like you know if you're looking at it from edward's point of view it's like you didn't just leave me and my brother you left uh you know mother as well so it's a it, it is a tough one but i'm just wondering that like, maybe there is a reason like i don't know to what degree like the pandemic swept through like when did it sweep through um uh, in in which case, like, did did Hohenheim already know that the mother had it, and therefore tried to go uh, like in search of a philosopher's stone to hopefully, you know, to come back and and save her, or if he knew inevitably that he wouldn't find one in time and she would eventually succumb, but having a philosopher's stone might be able to bring her back. I don't know. There are questions, obviously, there with Hohenheim. Um, you know, I, mean, I I just feel like for a show. Sure, you know, with uh, this much meat, which is funny because that's the sign that I'm literally looking at right now <laughs> uh, at the start of this episode, um, I, that it, there would be more to it than just that. However, there is also the other side, in which case Hohenheim could be uh, the Ouroboros' groups, like, you know, ca called the father, right? Um, possibly. Uh, and, and, you know, in which case there, there could be some, I don't know, there could be some interesting things anyway going on with that. Um... But yeah, the teacher also does not use a transmutation circle, and she calls herself like, or she sees herself almost as if she is the structural matrix of like, you know, we got some like sort of, I guess the details surrounding what actually a, a transmutation circle is and how all of that works, um, you know, with all of these uh, these 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 big words, you know what I mean, <laughs> to obviously to make it sound fancy, but obviously makes sense, um, and that you know she because she committed the tab taboo of human transmutation that she also saw the truth that ed did and therefore they you know they, they both can do um you know do it without the the transmutation circle uh, which is interesting um somebody did point out as well because of what i said in the um post discussion about uh about izumi when she actually tried to create a baby that i think i got it wrong or I took it, I took it as what the show was actually telling me, and I actually, you know, kind of got it right. But I think just the way that Izumi is describing it, um, let's see if I can just get up the, um, the actual comment <laughs> and read it out that way, because then it'll be easier, right? Um, yeah. So yeah, the illness is the removed organs, right? So it basically what the reason why she has this illness is because she, uh, they were basically um, taken when she did the human transmutation thing, similar to Ed's uh, leg and arm. Um, she doesn't. She just doesn't go around telling people that she committed a taboo, especially to her young students. It's easy to say that she's ill rather than her organs being removed. Uh, and, and all of that so it basically messes with the blood flow that that's basically why she has this illness which in a way is good because i feel like therefore because of how long she's been able to stay around that i i feel like she will be fine um like it's not something that she's going to succumb to that i feel like because i feel like it would have already happened by now um 
you know, but it, it, it kind of, I guess, guess makes her weak and she, she can only do, you know, a certain amount of stuff every day, maybe, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, I don't think there's anything else to really talk about. So, uh, so yeah, I think we're just going to get straight into episode 13, see what we get. So, of course, as always, uh, the reaction will be here on YouTube. Uh, but if for, whatever re uh, for whatever reason, if it gets taken down uh, for copyright in the future, then I will um, re-upload this video as a discussion only, and the link to the reaction will be in the description below if that is the case. But there is also the uh, link to the full length of this episode if you want to watch this episode in full, and not just the 10-minute cut version. The offer is there for you. But, yes, nothing else to really talk about. So, we're going to get episode 13, see what we get. So, without further ado... Let's go. To think you saw it and managed to survive. I doubt you even know how impressive that is. I... You're expelled. Uh, well, I mean... But teacher... <laughs> well, thank you for everything. Beasts of Dublith. Feel free to drop by if you're ever in town. I'm not so sure about that. You idiots! <laughs> You're so busy pouting, you can't see what your expulsion means. You aren't her students anymore, so now you're finally free to speak to Izumi as equals. We haven't done what we came here to do in the first place. <sighs> Thank you. Don't be your... let her kill you. You already asked her about the Philosopher's Stone. <clears throat> Teacher? <laughs> what the hell are you doing coming back here? And you call me teacher. We're trying to find a way to get our bodies back. And we won't leave without your help. Get out now! We're, We're staying! staying! Al, you didn't see the truth, did you? No. I don't really even know what that means. You must have lost your memory from the shock. We need to get Al's memory back. His entire body was taken from him. Just think what he must have seen. He must yeah. have seen more of the truth That's... than either of us did. I have an acquaintance that might know a way to retrieve your memory for you. <laughs> but... Let's eat dinner first. The rumors are true. He's able to transmute human souls. Master Sergeant Kane Fury. Warrant Officer Vato Fallman. Look like freaking Second Hughes. Lieutenant Hyman's Breda. Second Lieutenant Jean Havoc. First Lieutenant Reza Hawkeye. All five of you are transferring to Central with me. All right. No objections. Understood. <laughs> Rebar and like concrete. There's a dumbbell. Aha. Master. Oh, is his master? I'm glad that you're well. I was informed that you've been targeting state alchemists for execution. Your vengeance will only sow the seeds of further violence. What you're doing is senseless revenge. Would you look at that? He really is here. Looks like you got yourself a deal. We'll split the bounty three ways with you. Yoki! How could you do something like this? We took you in and treated you like family when you had nowhere else to go. Stop. Shut up! I never even wanted anything to do with you, Ishvalan! I'll rise up! I will oh, rise! Jesus. And I'll use my power to annihilate Edward Elric! Isn't he on one of the wanted posters? Capture him, please. Thanks for making this easy, pal. <laughs> Fucking hell. Freak! That's the end of you, mate. Please, I'm sorry. Please don't kill me. Please, I'm begging you to spare my life. So you're leaving Weasel. then. Your brother would be sad. Guessing the brother died in the village. Still, it's too late to turn back now. Hmm. I feel like they may have said his name once before, the guy with the tash. When they were like going through files and shit. We know your secret. Meet us at the Devil's Nest if you want to talk. And we know a lot about you. Well, that's good, because there's a lot about me that I don't know. Why don't you come with us? But my teacher always said I'm not supposed to go with strangers. So why'd you come all the way out here then, dude? How old are you? Fourteen. I'd say fourteen is old enough to think for yourself, kid. And you can start by coming with. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yes, Alphonse. So I thought it over for myself. And I decided that I should just make you tell me what I want to know. <laughs> want to do this by force. <laughs> oh. Sorry to drop in. Oh, God! Hey, be a good boy and hold still. I never thought For my turn. about that being a thing. I figured Al could fucking right snap our limbs in there, but... Your chimeras. And they happen to work for me. The Chimeras. 
greed. Fuck, he's a bloody Ouroboros guy. You're actually hollow. It's impossible. No one's made a chimera that can talk. You can't believe everything the government tells you, kid. Who would even be capable of creating one? The military. You say? You got it. There's a shadow world beneath yours that's jam-packed with the impossible. Hell, I'm more uncommon than they are. I'm a homunculus. Are they all? Really? All of the Ouroboros? No joke. A homunculus is just a theory. Nobody's made one. Oh, man. Yes, I gotta prove it. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> that was brutal, man. Oh, Jesus. Oh. So I reckon the Ouroboros tattoo is actually the no transmutation way. circle. You get it yet? Nothing is impossible, all right? I'm more interested in hearing what it's like to have a body that'll never die. It sounds like that's the perfect recipe for immortality to me. Let me explain. See, I'm greed. I want everything you can think of. Money and women, power and sex, status, glory. Aren't you already immortal? Well, I guess I was put together a little sturdier than most. I am nearly 200 years old, but I wouldn't exactly say that I'm immortal. I'm thinking Just this guy's a rogue. And tell him. I don't think he's I part of the Ouroboros group. That would mean I actually remember how I got it. I think he'd run away Even from if it. I could. I'm not the one who did the transmutation. Because he doesn't know about Dude, the fifth laboratory I'd be thing, happy right? To tell you where you could find him. <laughs> Are you serious? A Boris tattoo. Aren't you observant? I was hoping that I'd only have to deal with a little armored giant. Why don't you just ask your partners whatever you want to The rest of the Ouroboros gang from the fifth lab. Well, it's kind of a long story, but we don't talk he, much he, anymore. Yeah, he, he, got, he went away from I've got a little proposal for you. Figured. Because I could teach you how to fabricate your own homunculus in no time at all. In return, all I ask is you teach me how to transmute a soul. But I really don't understand why you would want your other body back. <laughs> Seems like you've got one that's perfect already. No, I don't! A different you don't thoughts about eat. it. You don't need to sleep. You don't even need to use the toilet. Sounds great to me. Shut your damned mouth! <laughs> you don't know anything about the hell he's had to go through stuck with that body! You kidnapped my brother and you want to trade secrets <laughs> with me?! And I won't give you slime anything! No! <laughs> I've never fucking seen a man agitated. I guess before. we're doing this by force again. <laughs> <laughs> that was inevitable. Next. Hey, you alive? Drop him! <laughs> nope. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> His hands being made off. <laughs> Fucking hell. Guard your head next time. Nothing special, but you're never gonna beat me, so I'd suggest <laughs> making a deal. You lose your temper like this, and you're gonna lose my information and your brother. My brother's fine. He's just waiting for me to kick your ass. <laughs> Sorry to let you down, but I've been holding I've back. No, it's, it's... This obscures my handsome face, so I try not to wear it that much. Try all you like, but you're not gonna beat oh, me. It's this dude. Catch! A friend of mine noticed a short blonde haired kid heading into a bar called the Devil's Nest. Oh, fucking hell. I thought when I was looking up from far away, look at a Gengar. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell, dude. Can't go there you go. A couple episodes where I'm getting fucked up. Piss vinegar. <laughs> piss and vinegar. You just can't win! Thanks for doing with me. What? Is my mechanic amazing or what? Even after all this, it's still working. Stay down! Did he... I did! He changed the material! He's torso open. Gah! 
it's trans. You may be a homunculus, but you really shouldn't have told me that your body is human, considering that means a third of it is made of carbon. It's obvious that's what your shield is made of. Interesting, okay. Once I got that figured out, the rest is simple alchemy. You can't hurt your shield and heal at the same time! <laughs> Here comes the teacher. <laughs> Sorry to barge in like this. You damn imbecile! Yeah! Thanks the for broom. your hospitality. He definitely needed the exercise. It's no fun fighting a woman. Okay, <laughs> <Fucking> now. <laughs> <laughs> well, now. Just what the hell are you? A housewife! <laughs> A housewife. Looks sick, dude. Alright, maybe not then. Maybe that wasn't the person that she was talking about. The one guy. But then... Oh, I don't know. Okay, episode 13. Right. <clears throat> well. I don't know then. Izumi was like... I know a person, right? I'm pretty sure she said it was in Double F. Um, And then, obviously, this crew shows up. Nicknamed the Beast of Double F, I'd imagine. Um... And they lure Alphonse there. Ed follows behind. And they offer up a way to, like, how to essentially create a homunculus. And the way that Greed was talking about it was putting Alphonse's soul into that homunculus. Um, you know, so uh, he, he would get a body back that way. Which is very, very interesting. I was not expecting a homunculus thing at all. Like a, an artificial person. I wasn't even thinking that as a possibility. Damn. That's cool though. So my thought process is that all of them are then. That's how uh, Lust was able to survive the um, when Hughes stabbed her in the head, right? It makes sense now. Yeah, so I figure they're all homunculus. Um, or homunculi, I guess you would probably call them, right? If you, you, you know, go in the plural route. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm, Izumi said that she knows somebody, but Greed was act, like, you know, was like, it seemed as though he never even met her before or knows who she is, you know? I mean, he asked, who the hell are you? Um, so I'm guessing I'm gonna I'm gonna have a guess and say that greed is the one that Izumi was talking about, but it wasn't like they were like, you know acquaintances. It was just I think that maybe Iz Izumi knew about greed, right? Um I mean it seems as obviously they lurk in like the sort of shadows. Um, you know, so they they don't go around really like, you know, noticed um but i mean even the fact that they're like sort of these uh, th i mean he has this crew that are chimeras um but you know they the the look of them are, are practically human you know what i mean it's like if it, it, they could get away with walking around <clears throat> and be fine um you know but that that's d d fucking hell a lot of shit going on i did call the greed was like sort of separate um, and I suppose it actually makes sense with him being greed as well. Like, what, like if he was greed, why would he care about this group that he's with? You know, like, you know, he'd want everything for himself. He wouldn't want to be somebody else's puppet, like, in a way, you know what I mean? Which I feel like whoever the father is, you know, obviously, I feel like it obviously makes sense at this point that father is the one that created them, right? Created the homunculi. Um... And so they refer to that guy as father, whoever it is. Um, like I've said previously, the only two I've got in mind are uh, Hohenheim and uh, Fuhrer Bradley. There's like the sort of the suspects that I have in my head. Um, I quite like Greed. I quite like him. <laughs> um, he, he's like... He doesn't... I don't think he really come acro he comes across as a 
as a truly bad guy. You know what I mean? I mean, I know that he's like greedy and he's like, I just want all. Like, but basically, what he's wanting is just the, you know, the the finer pleasures in life. Um, you know, like the materialistic approach and the sexual approach. He just wants, you know, he wants all of that kind of stuff, which, you know, it, it's not. It, I mean, I guess it all depends on, like, how he's willing to take it. You know what I mean? I, I guess in some aspects, just the way that they live their life, I wouldn't be surprised if he does want to take it by force, of course. But, like, you know, in terms of, like, if you're putting them relatively... If you're putting up greed and the chimeras relatively to other... Like, you know, to the to the actual, like, the Ouroboros group, you know, I, I, I would say that this guy's more of a like he's just a maverick i think um you know he just wants to he wants to do his own thing um you know what i'm actually thinking oh maybe hohenheim isn't the father then because i'm i'm looking here i've wrote down greed said he was 200 years old So that means there has to be somebody, like whoever the father is, has to be like, has to have figured out a way to not age. But how would you do that though? I'm trying to think of the possible, like what are the possibilities of alchemy? And in order to do that, right, in order to figure it, figure this out that's going through my head right now, like how to explain it. So, to a human body, right, the reason why we have like, you know, like on average anyway, a lifespan, right, a human lifespan, because the, the body only holds up for so much, like for so long, right, depending on obviously, you know, how you live your life and everything, that can be extended by a bit or, or shortened, right? Um, but like you know the natural the natural lifespan of a human the reason why that happens is because we sort of just you know we, we deteriorate and eventually that you know the the sort of body just like can't hold up um but if you were to use like alchemy to keep your body sort of like fresh like youthful could you do that fuck I'm trying to think of like what this like what the science would be behind that like because i mean theoretically you wouldn't be able to to transmute like an older body to a younger one, right? Like, because I don't think that would count as equivalent exchange, right? I mean, that's another thing as well, is like, we know that human transmutation is taboo. So theoretically, that means that, that it's taboo to do it to yourself as well, right? I guess. See, I don't know the ins and outs of that. I mean, just the just the term human transmutation would, you know, the 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 idea there is that yeah, it's it's you know it's taboo if you're using it on any human, including yourself. Um, so I guess it would be taboo to use it on yourself as well. But that's the only way that I'm thinking that this father to the Ouroboros group. Uh, or the, to the homunculi is like ha, is that old you know he has to be able to um lengthen his life and we haven't heard of anything like Fura Bradley being around for that long have we I don't think so but somebody has to be around that's like well, the guy could be, like, just doing things from the shadows, I suppose. He doesn't really have to be, like, a figure that's out in public a lot. 
Because you would think that people would pick up on it, right? Hmm. But yeah. I'm thinking that the Ouroboros uh, is the transmutation circle. So I think it's it just similar to like... I'm thinking of it as similar to Al's body, in a way. Like, the homunculi... Like, the homunculi... The homunculus as itself is just a... A suit, uh, I suppose. Um, but it's more sort of refined, I suppose. It's it's more, like, based in... Like, there has to be something about it that, like, makes it human. Like, at least to, like, as much human as you possibly can without creating an actual human. Because Greed was talking about how, like, you know, you, you don't need to eat, you don't need to drink, you don't even need to piss. <laughs> uh, you don't even need to sleep. Like, but... So, th like, my thought... My thoughts there then are greed does have to do that then. Like he has to do all that stuff. Um To what degree though? I mean he's fucking as a as an example, he literally had his head smashed off. So his brain was completely destroyed and then it grew back. But as far as I could tell, he retained every memory. But then again, we've all, we've already had that thing of like the memory stored in the body itself, like like almost you know, again back to episode two when we saw the, you know, like the ribbon. It's like almost like just stored within the body and not necessarily just the brain. Um, you know. Because my thought process is, if he can just, like, heal and regenerate, then realistically, I don't really think he would need to sleep, right? If it affects the brain that badly, you know, because, I mean, when you're, when you're, when you're tired, <laughs> you know what I mean? And you're, like, uh, to, to, you know, sort of charge, charge back up again, you know what I mean? You go, you go to sleep. Um, so you just, you recharge yourself. Um, but, you know... It, <laughs> that's got to do with your fucking your brain so I don't think you would need I, I don't know I don't think you would need to sleep really but because then otherwise it, it like something would have been affected by him you know his brain being you know although maybe he doesn't have a brain who the fuck knows it's a weird it's a, it, yeah a lot of a lot of fucking a lot of questions um who knows maybe that maybe that isn't um talked about or like you know like you weren't supposed to answer, like ask these questions um you know but i feel like for for the show it's like you know it's got decent writing so i would think that there would be you know that those questions should be asked um but it'd be interesting yeah uh yeah i love the carbon body thing like basically he uses the carbon in his body um, and, and, and that is his, that he sort of tr almost, I'm guessing he transmutes it over, like, over the, the, over his skin and it becomes his shield. Um, I love the fact that Ed was basically, like, transmuting it, um, you know, so that it would, you know, you would be able to get through it, make it, make it weaker. I'm guessing what he did was he just took out, um sort of like a percentage of the carbon because it obviously didn't change what it looked like you know what I mean it didn't break it down um, you know but it made it weaker and enough to, to actually get through uh, which is really really smart I love that um, I love that when uh, I don't know what her name was but she jumped inside Al I never even thought that was <laughs> like that was a thing I was ever going to see um, you know but I, I feel uh, God, I don't know. It's it's interesting, like having her, with like in it, in the suit of armor, and able to outstrength Al. Like I would, I would figure, like Al would. But that's that's the thing is like that. What's I suppose odd about having Al be a suit of armor is that there's no like, 
indicator for strength. Like, it's not like he has muscles, is it? <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, what's the indicator of strength? But we've seen him, like, outdo people, like, literally, like, strength-wise, you know what I mean? I mean, they had to get the guy who was, like, you know, had cow in him to, to you know, to keep him down. So, he has to have some strength. I figured he would have been able to, to, to you know... outmaneuver her but then i guess you just have to think of it as like what if someone was in your body i know that's just like not physically like you know possible um you know aside from the obvious yeah a baby right <laughs> but i'm talking about like if 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 you just you know hypothetically just talk about the fact of like if there was a smaller human inside you you would like you, you i guess you would struggle to move right so i guess that's that um but yeah hmm either way i think the ouroboros is the is the transmutation circle for the for the for the group and if that's the case that's what needs to be destroyed right that's what needs to be destroyed i think this is the only way we really get a body for al i don't see it being a case of bringing back a full fucking body, like a proper, a, a, a purely human body. You know what I mean? I feel like that's that was almost something that was talked about in the, you know, a couple of episodes ago when the baby was born and stuff. And like, they were talking about like how, you know, alchemists and stuff, you know, we are yet to be able to create a human. You know what I mean? Like, like that is. So I feel like, I feel like that's something that will never happen. But a homunculus is about as close as you can get. And I feel like if, you know, what Greed was talking about there, how you can feel, you can touch, you can, you know, you, you know, you, you eat, you drink, you sleep. I feel like, dude, take it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And the good thing about it is he doesn't eat like, you know, it's a struggle for him to die. So, you know, it's it's like even if, if that's everything that Al wants, I feel like that's probably as close as you're going to get. Um, aside from a, a true, pure Philosopher's Stone. And I would obviously, you know, at this point, we don't know the effects of what that could possibly do at this point. So, you know, but, um, but yeah. Uh, other than that, um, we had, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I'll talk about, right. So first of all, yeah, Mustang's transfer. Uh, he's heading to Central now, uh, which is cool. I feel like there's going to be a lot more story going on with him there rather than being in East City or whatever. Um, and he's taking a, a crew um, with him to have his back, I'd imagine, right? Uh, that's one of the things that Hughes talked to him about uh, at one point, rest in peace. Um, I mean, even one of them looks like Hughes, you know what I mean? It looks like a miniature Hughes. Like if Hughes had like a son, like that, that's what, it, that's what it look, he looked like, you know? But... Um, but yeah, way to keep him in memory, um, and yeah, Alphonse. I talked about memory. Alphonse's memory. I didn't. I didn't even think about that. Like, I may have asked it in episode two, post discussion or something. Like, what did Al see when he when his body was gone? I didn't even. Th you know, I didn't even think like. Yeah, like he must have had some perception of something. Or if it was just purely black until Ed was, like, able to, you know, tran transmute his soul into the, into the armor. Um, but it, it, it's a weird, like... You know what I would, I would probably describe it as? If I'm thinking... If I'm taking what, you know... Because they're going with the theory that because Al's, like, all of his body was gone, that he would have gained access to more truth. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because all of his body was gone, as opposed to just an arm and a leg. That's the theory that they that they propose there, and, and therefore they're thinking that Al actually has, like, you know, more of a, like more truth than them. And, and it's... <sighs> The way that I'm thinking about it is when they went and found this truth where they saw the everything creature anomaly thing, that what they were doing was almost like deep, like, 
like deep diving into their own like consciousness in a way so because right so if, if they're going with the theory right that al's like all of his body was gone therefore he has more truth or he, he saw more truth it's just that all of his body was gone and, and therefore like his memory's completely forgotten um that there would be more <laughs> what, what do you call them skin ribbons to look at and like i guess you just deep like deep dive into like your own like you know to find out the secrets of the of the body which is also the secrets of the universe because you know all is one one is all and all of that um that you, <clears throat> the secrets of the universe or whatever could be found within yourself almost kind of thing you know and like in episode two when we saw ed like you know he got pulled through the door right and he's he's, he's fallen through and you're seeing these ribbons of memory which is like you know pulled from his own leg and arm if that is what happened to al there would be more to take from because it's more of his body meaning that he has more truth the problem is, is that he's forgot it so maybe that's what it is maybe this everything being is just like that's like your human that could be like your human subconscious that's just there and what ed was when he was like himself in that like sort of white area looking at it it was like because he was like in his own uh, i don't know he's in his own consciousness i don't even know what i'm talking about now like this is shit like honestly i should have like a fucking a doobie here and just smoking it away and just talking about like you know conspiracy theories and shit um but yeah interesting one i never i never thought about the fact that alphonse would have you know because he was also involved in the the transmutation circle you know what i mean um but the fact that it was his body that disintegrated and you know ed got off um you know i don't want to say more lightly because it, it's still you know it's tough but you know like he only lost an arm and a leg alphonse must have been connected to it like a hell of a lot more you know what i mean um But the interesting thing about it is that I don't know to what degree, like, something has to be taken. Like, you know, you know, because if, if, considering you had Ed and Al doing the transmutation, right? Al was all gone. Ed lost an arm and a leg. But when Izumi does it, she, she lost, you know, some organs and that was it. Again, I don't want to say it just like that's it, like it's nothing because it, it is tough. I'm just I'm just trying to like figure out how how does it how does it know how much to take? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I mean, I, I guess if you want to be literal about it, you could say like, well, they were trying to bring back a full, you know, human adult, whereas um, you know, where, whereas Izumi was just trying to create a, a baby. Um, Hmm, it's interesting, you know. Ah, fucking hell, the mind beckons. Um, yeah. So other than that, we had uh, Scar again uh, back at the slums. Uh, interest, interestingly enough, Scar's master was there, uh, and he was talking about how Scar's basically out there for vengeance because uh, trying to search for the guy. Well, it, it seems like he's just taking that on State Alchemist anyway, right? But, you know, he's out for vengeance because of, you know, his town burning. I imagine his brother was in it. Um, it's interesting that they don't talk... He never talked about his father or his mother or anything like that. It was just strictly his brother. So I don't know if it's a case of, like, his brother was all he had. And then the, uh, the village got burned down. He went with it. And then Scar was all that's left. It's like he's got no family left. So, you know, it's like, can't turn back now. Um, but, yeah, the master was, like, wanting peace interesting i wonder if he was always like that maybe um there could be this thing of like it's you know ishval because they were the ones that first moved in to attack you know what i mean and then obviously the the you know the the you know the, the military came back at them uh started sending state alchemists enough to like kind of you know keep them at bay um and they kind of pushed back a, a bit too hard is what i'm taking from it but um 
It would be. Int I wonder if there's like a. Well, because we do, we didn't. We... I don't think there was anyone in charge of Ishval, was there? Like there wasn't like a head honcho. I don't think. Um, it it was just like they were kind of. Just living their own lives, kind of thing, in their own place. Um, but I don't, I don't think it was like a head of the like Ishval people. Um, there, there was just the god Ishvala, right? And. <sighs> But I wonder if there was just a certain people that were more militaristic in Ishval than others. You know? And the Master was one of those people that was like for peace and everything. And it could have been just that. And then because of that, you had all the peaceful people of Ishval basically, you know, like you could liken it to, um, to like, you know, Nazi Germany in a way. Like there were, you know, there were German people. Like in obviously yeah, in Germany, like at that time, that you know, it's like any any type of war, I suppose. Like you always have the militaristic group that's pushing on and whatnot, and then when the retaliation occurs, the regular peaceful civilians suffer the consequences because of those militaristic people, right? Uh, of that people. So I I I feel like that's what happened, right? And then you had like the likes of Kimberly, who was just happy to go around and 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 you know and kill people and you know cause carnage like he wanted to do, and he didn't care. You know what I mean? It just it gave him free reign almost in a way like to to get away with it. So, you know, and yeah, and that was that. So, hmm, interesting. Um, and last but not least, there was the Tash guy. Oh, might be. Might be least, who knows? <laughs> he was a bit. He had a crazy voice. Uh, he seems like a crazy persona, but uh, yeah, I recognise that guy um, as as a, on the wanted posters, right? Because there's Scar, there is that dude, and there was one other dude, and I can't remember who that who that is. Like, I don't even think I'd be able to pull him out of like, you know, of, of the crowd if if his character does show up at some point. But um, yeah, uh, that that Tash guy, I remember seeing him. He was once a state. He was once a part of the military, right? Um, I'm sure there were, as aside from like wanted posters, there was a episode like back in it could be like episode five or something like that where they were going through files and his popped up. You know what I mean? Because you know they were saying that there was a lot of people, like a lot of sort of military people that were going off and doing you know bad things or basically you know being corrupt about it uh, and using their military thingy for their military reputation for like you know to do bad shit. But, um, but yeah, I mean, pretty much that's all I got. So, yeah, very, very interesting episode. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how this is resolved next episode. Um, it, it, the, the thing is with this show, right, is that because the, the sort of, I guess, the end goal for the Elric brothers is that they want to get their, like, you know, full bodies again, right? Um, now... This homunculus idea has come up into the fold, right? But the thing is with this show is that every time they get close to something, it seems like, oh, we, we can figure this out now. Something pulls them away from it. Like, either it's not possible anymore, or fucking, or, you know, the, something's happened that, that stops them in their tracks, and hit not, hit, they hit another roadblock again and again and again. It's been that way with the Philosopher's Stone. And Greed seems to think he can make a homunculus. But the thing is, he's a homunculus himself, so he must have witnessed someone else do it. Or he just has the memories because he is a homunculus of how to create one. The other thing is that whilst the possibility, as of right now, could be out there to create one for... Um, uh, for Al, you, you can't really create a homunculus arm or a leg, right? <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. Um... But I guess if it's an artificial body part that can somehow he can attach, so yeah, like, but then that's you know something that can feel and touch and everything. Like that, I don't know, but um, it'll be interesting. I also don't think it, it could work the same way either. Like, there's a I think there's a possibility out there that, that the humongous idea m might not work with Al because again you would have to create the suit of armor, the homunculus. And then transfer Al into it. 
I don't know if that was the same thing. I don't. I'm not sure if that's the same thing that happened with Greed. You know what I mean? Like, he calls himself an artificial person, and by, you know, the literal definition, the homunculus is an artificial person. It's not like a fucking. I don't think it's a soul in a in a suit of armor kind of thing, you know, or in a body. So that's the question: is whether or not these hum, these homun homunculi are artificially created people, meaning like an entirely new person, or it's just somebody who was once human has had their soul transferred into the homunculus body. That's the question that I want answered. But anyway, that's all I've got for this episode. So thank you everyone for watching. Uh, in the description below, I've linked to certain things. One of them is the Discord, so you can get yourself over there if you wish. And I also have a Patreon page as well. So if you do want to support me on Patreon, that'd be very much appreciated. There is a bunch of different tiers and rewards on there. Like early access for $5 a month gives you access to shows a week early. So, you know, as always, I uh, release two episodes every week, um, you know, to the, to the YouTube public. So along with this episode, uh, episode 14 will be out like right now with this episode so you can go watch that of course uh on youtube uh, but if you want to get access to episode 15 and 16 right now then you want early access of course uh you know and you can get that right away there's also the full length tier if you want to watch any of my reactions in full and not just the cut 10 minute versions and then there's the exclusive tier which gives you access to uh, movie reactions and things like that which is coming up very very soon sooner than you actually think uh but yeah that's all i got so thank you for watching i'll see you all next time bye bye